welcome to another episode of the Big Daddy D Reviews. Here we're going to take another look at a slice of classic zombie cinema. Today we're going to take a look at the 30th anniversary DVD edition of City of the Living Dead. Now this DVD was kindly given to me by uh, a good friend of mine and fellow zombie enthusiast Trev Williams. He already had a copy of this for when he went to uh, the most recent Fright Fest. Um, he got a copy of this in his goodie bag and he already had it on Blu-ray. So he very kindly gave this to me. So I said that I would uh, review this and acknowledge him for it. Now what I'm going to do here is very similar to what I did when I reviewed the Dawn of the Dead Ultimate Edition that another friend of mine and zombie enthusiast Pete Trigg sent me. We're going to take a look at the actual film itself and see how that holds up. And then from there we'll take a look and see what uh, all these various bits and pieces and goodies that the DVD package itself gives. So let's roll the footage now of our review of City of the Living Dead. <laughs> and then we'll come back to the DVD itself. That's a good start. The argument over slow zombies versus fast zombies is one that zombie film fans often debate about. Should the undead shuffle or sprint after their prey? It doesn't matter either way because in 1980 Lucio Fucci gave the old middle finger salute to both camps when he released City of the Living Dead as these zombies have levitation and teleportation abilities. Hmm. That's different. After a priest hangs himself in a cemetery, Mary, a young woman with psychic powers, has a vision of this happening and apparently dies of fright. She later reawakens, but by this point, she's already been buried in her coffin. Luckily, a New York journalist, Peter, hears her screams and rescues her by plunging a pickaxe into the coffin in exactly the same place where her head would be. Amazingly, Mary is incredibly grateful about this, despite the fact that she came within inches of having her face taken off. Now it turns out that by the priest killing himself, not only has he potentially lowered property values in the town, but he's also caused the gates of hell to be opened, and the living dead now walk the earth. Mary and Peter have until All Saints Day to close the gates again and save humanity. Funnily enough, my favourite scene in this movie doesn't even feature zombies at all. When this old guy catches his daughter in the garage with this other bloke, he goes absolutely batshit insane and starts beating the crap out of him. This might seem like an overreaction, but bear in mind that the same weirdo was about to get it on with a blow-up doll later on the movie. During the scrap, the weird guy knocks a switch that turns on a large power drill. Mmm, guess what's going to happen next? The father starts choking him and holds his head down as it slowly gets closer and closer to the drill. This sequence is so long and drawn out that it's absolutely comical. The guy doesn't even put up a fight against the old man. He just looks at the drill in terror as if he's thinking, Oh no, I'm going to get drilled to death, what do I do? Um, you put up a fight and try and get out of the way, you dumb shit. Otherwise, this will happen. Ooh, what a way to go. I think we're going to have to go over now to Trey Guard from Nightmare and get his opinion on this. Ooh, nasty. In many ways, this can be seen as an education on how not to make a zombie movie. There's random noises going off in the background, including what appear to be the sound of Howler Monkeys. I don't know, maybe they had a sound effects album that they wanted to get the money's worth out of. Not to mention that there isn't a single scene in the movie where the music just fades out. It just ends abruptly. But one thing that City of the Living Dead managed to show is how damn entertaining Italian horror flicks are. The dubbing is unintentionally hilarious. The plot is so loosely structured that you'd be forgiven for thinking that the filmmakers didn't actually have a script and just made random shit up as they went along. And of course there's some fantastic gore sequences. Not only do we have the drill going into the head moment, we also get the scene known as the Devil's Spew where a lady pukes up what is actually an entire goat's intestine. Mmm. Lovely stuff. Living Dead is exactly what you should expect of an Italian horror flick from the early 80s. If you liked Fushi's other genre works like Zombie Flesh Eaters, House by the Cemetery and The Beyond, then you are guaranteed to have a good time with this classic as well. Does it make any sense? Does it bollocks? But is it entertaining? Oh yes. City of the Living Dead might not be considered to be a good film by mainstream standards, but it's an undeniably entertaining one all the same. Horror aficionados and Italian genre fans in particular will eat it up with gusto and ask for more. 
which brings us nicely onto the review of the DVD box set itself. Well, first of all, for a 30-year-old Italian horror movie, this looks incredible. And all credit is due to the amazing job that Arrow Video have done here with its high-definition remastering of this classic. The colours are more vibrant, the contrasts are balanced better than before, and as a result, this movie could pass for being 10 years younger than it actually is. Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other HD remasters that Arrow Video have done on other horror classics, such as Zombie Flesh Eaters. Yep, now you can squirm comfortably in your seat as you watch that infamous eye trauma scene in full-on 1080p HD loveliness. I should point out though that although this is the DVD version I'm reviewing here, the Blu-ray version is pretty much identical. The only difference is that the DVD version has two discs, whilst the Blu-ray's got it all on one. Out of video, I've also done a cracking job with the packaging itself, which is always something I appreciate. The DVD box set comes with six interchangeable sleeves with different artwork for the film. From different, from different parts of the world, uh, along with a double-sided mini poster and a booklet. I'd love to frame these and hang them in the hallway, or maybe in, in, the, uh, in the bathroom, but uh, I don't think the missus will be too pleased about that. On the disc itself, they are, as expected, the usual selections of photo galleries and theatrical trailers, both in English uh, and Italian. There are also two commentary tracks on the DVD. One is with the actress that plays Mary, uh, my apologies for get, if I get the name, if, if I get the pronunciation wrong, uh, Catrona McCall, along with a chap called Jay Slater, who wrote a book about Italian cannibal and zombie movies called Eaten Alive. Uh, this documentary had been recorded several years ago for a previous DVD release, so chances are you may have heard this one before. However, there's also a brand new recorded track with uh, Giovanni Lombardo, oh sorry, Giovanni Lombardo Radis, otherwise known as the guy who got the drill in the head during this movie. In fact, Radis is mostly famous for appearing in horror movies and getting killed off in numerous gruesome ways. So in a way, it's rather fitting that there's also a bonus feature on the disc that shows all these different deaths as well. Uh, throughout the gory moments, Radis talks about his career, the films, the directors, and also, interestingly enough, trying to hide his cock during certain scenes. It's particularly good when he starts talking about the truly fucking awful cannibal Ferox that he was unfortunate enough to appear in. For me, this was one of the best features of the box set. As the director of this movie, and numerous other Italian horror movies, Lucio Fucci is no longer with us, having passed away in 1996, the other bonus features are made up mostly of interviews with various different actors and directors, talking about Fucci's films and career, and about the great man himself. Fucci in the House is made up of numerous directors and actors, including Joe Dante, talking about their various memories and anecdotes of Fucci, many of which are uh, rather entertaining. Catonia McCall and uh, Carlo D'Amigio, he of the fine head of curly hair and full-on beard combo, even by early 80s Italian cinema standards, have their own separate interview segments in which they reminisce about not only this film, but also the various other films they did with Fucci, with the maggot scene in particular still being particularly memorable. There is even an interview with Fushi's own daughter, where she talks in particular about being on the set of her father's films as a child, as well as Fushi's rivalry with fellow Italian filmmaker Dario Argento. Another interview is with Luigi Cosi, who was also part of the Italian film industry at the same time as Fushi. He talks about what the industry was like during the 70s and 80s, and he too speaks about the rivalry between Fushi and Argento. Another interview is with Darden Sa Sassetti. Sorry if I get these names wrong, who openly admits that he enjoyed writing scripts that made little to no sense whatsoever. Well, at least he's honest. Finally, we've got a Q&A session featuring Katrina McCall and Giovanni Lombardo Radis, speaking to an audience in Scotland after a sold-out screening of the film. Thankfully, subtitles were provided for the Scottish audience members, otherwise it would have made for a very confusing night. In conclusion, if you have to have City of the Living Dead in your DVD or Blu-ray collection, then this is the best version to have. Not only because of the fantastic job that Arrow Video have done with the picture and presentation, but also because of the superb packaging and the great extras on the disc. Again, keep an eye out for further releases from Arrow because they have done a bloody good job with this, no pun intended. It's been released in the UK, but from what I can tell, the DVD appears to be region free. So if you don't live in Blighty, it's well worth getting hold of an import if you can. The Big Daddy D gives City of the Living Dead, 30th Anniversary Edition, a resounding thumbs up.